My name is Jared Davis, and I'm the product sustainability leader for our packaging and specialty plastics business. On behalf of the Dow Chemical Company, I would like to thank you for the very warm welcome from Joe, from Kenyatta University, and from you uh, as Yali. I had an opportunity to speak to this audience back in 2018, and I will tell you it is a distinct honor and a pleasure to be back with you today. We have a full program for today. We are really going to hear from some of you regarding some of the innovative ideas that we have and that you have around circular economy as a part of the design challenge. However, because this is an interactive session, a session where we want to hear you, we want to start off uh, and have a bit of a dialogue session with you. But before doing that, we also have the distinct honor of having with us today in the region, our Dow president and CFO. Howard Ungerleiter is joining us here from Midland, Michigan. He will give some opening remarks and then he will turn the conversation over to you to ask a few questions, to engage uh, on a topic of, of great importance to us and that's circular economy. Um, so at this point, I will ask you to join me in, in welcoming Howard, but after that we will have Howard come up and then the second half of our program will be related to the design challenge. So with that being said, please join me in welcoming Howard Ungerleiter. Thank you, Jared. How about a, a round of applause for Joe and Deloitte? But just a second on Joe. So you have to be really nice to Joe because uh, Deloitte is Dow's external auditor. <laughs> and so I need, I always want Joe and Deloitte, anybody at Deloitte, in a good mood. So, and we've had, we, Deloitte and Dow have, uh, our relationship dates back 100 years. They've been our external auditors. So thank you, Joe. Hello, Yali. Hello. How about Team Dow? Can I get a little? OK, that's good. Um, you know, I, look, I'm going to talk just for a couple of minutes. I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes on uh, inclusion. Uh, and, uh, and then I really, as Jared said, I really want to hear from you. So uh, please, if you have questions, uh, shout them out. What I would say is if it's a shy group and you don't have questions, then as the Dow team will, will know, I will ask you questions. Uh, and maybe to make it uh, easier, uh, if you have a friend that couldn't be here today, and they wanted to ask a question. I, I'm also willing to answer your friend's question. Is that a deal in the back? Usually the troublemakers are in the back. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye. I'm going to keep an eye on you. You know, I also actually just want to take a second before I jump into inclusion uh, to thank Javier Constante. Um, you know, he really has been our. I don't know what the appropriate term. Maybe in Italian would be godfather of the whole. Uh, the, the padrino, the padrino of the whole uh, African experience for Dow with Project Butterfly and the connection with Yali. And, uh, you know, I also want to pray for you uh, as you go to Latin America that our results continue to go up in Brazil and Argentina. So we're, we're saying so long from Africa, but we're watching you as well, okay, Javier? So look, inclusion, we all have many roles in life, right? Uh, you know, for me, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a son, uh, I'm, a, I'm a husband, I'm a brother, hopefully I'm a friend to a few people. Uh, and I also, uh, you know, at Dow, I'm the president and the CFO. And I would tell you just in the many roles that I have, um, I, I really believe strongly uh, in inclusion for two reasons, okay? And, and the first one maybe makes sense for everybody, I hope everybody, um, just as human beings, Okay, so that's the problem. As, uh, as, as, as human beings, we all have much more in common than we have differences. And if you think about what anybody wants, what you want for yourselves, what you want for your friends, for your family, for your loved ones, you want to be able to live up to your full personal and professional potential. And I mean, it is, it is not that complicated. It is that simple, but it is very hard to do, but so personally as human beings, being inclusive is absolutely the right thing to do. But then I put my, my CFO hat on and CFOs uh, like numbers, so I have to just stand right here. 
I have to stand in. So basically, the speakers. Okay, this is not going to. This is not going to be easy for me because I, I want to wander in the back. Um, but the the research on inclusion and in enterprises is also overwhelming. Uh, no, no matter you know, no matter what you think, uh, inclusive companies, inclusive enterprises will achieve their goals, will achieve more than what they could accomplish if they were not inclusive, and absolutely uh, will generate them faster and more. So if you think about it in the, you know, the, the public company context where, where I live and work every day, uh, inclusive companies, truly inclusive companies drive earnings, double-digit increases in earnings versus non-inclusive companies. They drive revenue or turnover 5 to 10% faster than non-inclusive companies. When you think about it from a return on capital or return on equity standpoint, it's well north of 13% increase in return on equity or return on capital relative to non-inclusive enterprises. And so I would just tell you that's why, that's why inclusion is so important to a company like Dow. Uh, and I can sense it in the room that it's a, a very key part of YALI, and I want to thank you all for that. Um, you know, the, one of the ways we do uh, inclusion at Dow is we have created a bunch of ERGs, what we call employee resource groups. We actually have 10 employee resource groups around the world, and it's really focused on every characteristic you can imagine, uh, gender, uh, ethnicity, uh, religion, race, sexual orientation, disability, and I can go on and on. We have 10 of them. And one of the things that I just want to announce uh, today here with you at YALI is we're launching uh, our GAN uh, ERG uh, here in Africa, and that's our Global African Affinity Network. And it's a global network, and we're establishing uh, an, a, a location here in Africa. And in order to help make that a reality, and spur, and if I could make that connection with YALI, spur economic development, spur enterprise development, uh, Dow is going to donate $25,000 together with our partner Wildlands to really help facilitate enterprise development here uh, in Africa. So I just want to make that announcement. So I would just, uh, I would just challenge you uh, as you think about your future, whether it's in a, whether it's in a small, uh, a medium enterprise, whether it's an entrepreneurial venture that you're going to start yourself, whether you want to join a fantastic audit firm <laughs> called Deloitte, whether you want to join the Dow Material Science Company, otherwise known as the Dow Chemical Company, uh, or you want to join a government or an NGO or anything in between, please, my challenge to you is what are you doing every day not only to bring your full self to work or to whatever activity you do to live up to your full personal and professional potential, but what are you doing to the, those around you to build them up and to really allow them to live up to their full personal and professional potential. So that's, that's my thoughts on inclusion. I'm very much looking forward to the design, uh, judging the challenge. I can't wait to, to see what you guys are doing, and I'm happy to take a, a few questions. Who wants to be first? Howard. Oh, so, Jared's first? You can't, you can't ask a question. No, but you know, Howard, I, I, as I told you before, I had an opportunity to be here, and these, this Yali audience is not shy, and I already have a list of questions. Oh, folks who already okay. these, were, these were submitted. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, I'm willing to take a hand, by the way. So you said you wanted questions, so we, we have some for you. So first, right. our first question is from Caroline uh, from here in Kenya. And uh, Felicia may have to help me identify as folks are in the room. Uh, is Caroline, Caroline in here? Do we see Caroline? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to Caroline. We also have a question. Okay, our second question is uh, from one of our colleagues from um, Rwanda. Uh, is it uh, Aniza? Ineza. We are trying to give our contribution mainly in circular economy because we believe that green economy is the future uh, stability of Africa. 
But uh, for example, we did an activity recently for a period of two hours. We tried to collect single-use plastic in the community, and we collected 12 bags of 100 kg per, per bag. But I want to ask you, what can be your message for us youth that try to give our contribution, but we constantly be struck back with the fact that we don't have the technology, we don't have the skills, we don't have enough support. And uh, when we try to reach out, for example, here in Africa, the technology is mainly far away. For example, the technology that we want to have is uh, in Thailand. It's hard for us to get a Thailand company coming here in Rwanda, and also after, after being accepted, it's hard for them to be uh, willing to work with the youth, so what can be the message? It's a critical issue for Africa, but for every country, and it's also a critical issue for Dow. I mean, uh, plastics is a, a one of our large business units. What I would say, what you can do, what all of us need to do is help us, help us drive a truly circular economy for plastics. Um, and what, one of the things that we've done is we've helped establish a global alliance called the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. There's about 45 companies around the world, from resin producers to brand owners like P&G. I saw P&G on the, on the wall, actually. Their CEO is the chair currently of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. Uh, we have uh, retailers and we have uh, waste companies as well. And we're working to clean up the plastic waste. Uh, actually, if you think about um, waste, it's not just a plastic problem, it's really a waste problem. Because un unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, when you see the plastic in the rivers and the oceans, it, it's there because it floats and you can see it. But I guarantee you there is just as much wood, metal, glass in those rivers and the oceans, but because the density is different, that sinks to the bottom and you just don't see it. So the Alliance to End Plastic Waste is really focused on cleaning up the rivers and the oceans, but then we really have to work with governments and cities around the world to create solid waste solutions so that people actually don't put more trash or more waste in the rivers and the oceans, and we actually begin the process of closing the loop. So actually one of the things that we did while we were here just a little while ago is um, we work with Mr. Green, uh, who's a local entrepreneur who's driving circularity in plastics. So he's collecting, uh, he's collecting plastics waste from all over Kenya, and he's bringing it to his collection center, and he is washing it, sorting it, and then repelletizing it and turning it back into uh, different products. So I would say, if you want to connect with me, I'm happy to connect you with the Alliance to End Plastic Waste on a global basis, and then they will have, because uh, this is a brand new, it's probably, they just hired their CEO about six, six months ago, so this is new, but they will have an African outpost that we can uh, help connect you with. The other one is we can connect you with Mr. Green, and the other one is uh, send me your CV, and we'll see if we can get you into Dow. <laughs> Those are my three. About your, your personal experience in, the, in this industry or in this business, so what is the most challenging situation that we are able to handle that, you know, became uh, an asset in your business or in your organization? So, you know, I would say, uh, let, me, let me take a step back, because I think really the question is, if I could interpret it as how, how to succeed. In an, in an enterprise, whether it's big or small, right? Whether it's a for-profit or not-for-profit. And I, uh, there's, we don't, have a, we don't have a whiteboard, so you're gonna all have to just follow along with me. There is actually a, there's actually a simple equation. Uh, actually, there's a few equations which I could go uh, over, but one is uh, the letter P, and then a greater than sign, uh, and then uh, GPS. And that equation, I, I think about that as the leadership equation. Uh, and it stands for the number of problems in the world are always uh, bigger than the number of good problem solvers. And there's only two kinds of people, actually. And you have to ask yourself, which side of that equation are you on? And I guarantee you that if you are not a good problem solver, eventually 
you will be somebody else's problem that they will have to deal with. So, you know, I would tell you that, you know, uh, you know look, I have, I have uh, failed often. But, uh, but what's the most important is to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and really think about what is the problem you're trying to solve and how can you collaborate with people to help you solve it. Because I guarantee you um, there are people uh, around you, maybe one, two, three, four, or uh, maybe if the Kevin Bacon uh, rule is true, no more than six uh, connections away from you that have more knowledge and more experience actually have dealt with either that exact problem or something very similar. So my, my challenge to you is be a problem solver and uh, wake up every day and think about how you can solve other people's problems and you will continue to grow and succeed. Yeah, thanks. I'm Justin Kihuelo from Tanzania. My question is that uh, most of the African leaders' uh, problems are long-staying power. So my question is uh, how do these long-staying power of the African leaders affect the circular economy? And uh, it also kills the future dreams of the young leaders. How do you advise this? So this is this is a uh, this is a big political question. I'm glad you're not asking me for who's going to win the next presidential election for the for the United States. Um, you know, look, I don't know that tenure uh, in a role is necessarily uh, helpful or harmful. I would say if if a leader, uh, you know, a leader has to constantly be challenging themselves to grow. And I would say no matter if you're in a role for six months, six years, or 16 years, if you have a view that you're not the smartest person on every topic, and that you are curious and inquisitive, and you like to learn, then you could stay in power, frankly, in, in the private sector or the public sector for a very long time. I think when you have a leader that stops thinking and stops inquiring, and stops really being curious, and stops learning, you know, that leader can be there for six days, and I would say it's time for a, another leader, is how I would answer that question. Thank you. I'm Israel. I'm from DRC. I am a general manager of an NGO that works for people with disability. We are empowering them on entrepreneurship so that they can be able to support themselves by creating some economic activities. So I want though to be in my country. I don't know if it's already a, a representation in my country, DRC, so that I can, uh, we can be in partnership with, in partnership with you because I, I, I believe on entrepreneurship of youth. Because I know entrepreneurship is the best solution to drop uh, the unemployment in Africa. This is my, uh, my wish. So I want thou to be in my country. Yes, thank you. Excellent. So, so Luciano Poli, stand up. <clears throat> so Luciano Poli is our brand new DAO leader for Africa. So the two of you should connect and together. What I would say, and thank you for what you do, what you do with, for people with disabilities, one of the 10 ERGs uh, that Dow has around the world is called DEN, uh, uh, Disability Employee Network. And so we, around the world, we also do a lot of hiring uh, and a lot of community work uh, for people of all abilities. And so I'd love to get you into Dow's DEN uh, connectivity into Africa because I'm guessing we can do a lot together if we put our minds together. Um, I think part of my question you answered when you responded to Ineza. Um, I wanted to ask uh, something else. You, I read from your website that you work on wood and plastic composites and I understand that we, the process for recycling plastics is a bit clear. But my question was, 
because you're so big on sustainability when it comes to the wood aspect we know that it requires cutting down trees and we're already having such a problem with that with uh, development all over and all these things so i wanted to know how exactly you're managing that sustainability of using wood thanks thank you you know the the whole you know the whole sustainability uh, debate, discussion, challenge is, is also is a challenge, but it is also an opportunity. And as you rightly bring up, some people think immediately, okay, uh, plastics are bad, trees, they grow in the environment, they're natural, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do, uh, I'm just gonna do everything with wood. And what you rightly point out is that can have devastating effects on climate change, it can have devastating impacts on ecology. Just look what's happening in the Amazon uh, forest today. So, you know, we are a science-based company, uh, and we really try to focus on the data, right? And so one of the things that we, why we are driving this whole plastic circular economy is because actually plastics is the most sustainable material, more sustainable than glass or metal or paper that would come from trees. It's six to 10 times, six to 10 times more sustainable from a total carbon usage and uh, climate change perspective. But the challenge that we have is we've got to not only clean up the waste that we talked about, stop the waste from going in, but it really is, and this goes back to the design challenge that we have, we have to drive circularity. And whether it's wood plastic composite as one answer, we're actually taking, uh, we take a, we have one project uh, that we can talk to you about afterwards that we take tall oil, which is a waste product from pulp and paper mills in Scandinavia, and we are now taking that tall oil, which is used to just go to a landfill, and we're taking that and turning that into fuel to fuel our manufacturing plants around the world. And so, you know, the way we have to think about it, all of us, is there's a finite number of resources on the planet. And how do we optimize the number of resources and drive real circularity so that the next many generations can have the same benefits, if not more, uh, that we all have today? Thanks for the question. Thank you for the time, everybody.